Hello Virgo, welcome to your April 2023 tarot card reading. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for being here. For those of you who are new, my name is Jane. So this month is a very exciting month. Now we are gonna be talking about the astrology in a separate video, just like I did last month. So be sure to check in in the next couple of days uh, to kind of get that astrological forecast update as well. This video, we are focusing on the tarot card predictions. So you are welcome to watch for either your sun, moon, or rising sign, whichever you feel feel compelled to do. Uh, also just to keep in mind that if you are a member on the website, don't forget to log in to view the comprehensive reading. If you're not, you can still always just purchase a one-off just like always. Uh, but if you would like to become a member, all that information is in the description box down below. So we're going to keep that short and sweet today. Let's go ahead and get into the reading. Thank you all so much. And I'll see you in just a sec. Hello Virgo, welcome to your April 2023 tarot card reading. Let's go ahead here and take a look. Okay. I feel a lot of activity for you this month, which I think feels really good. Uh, I think it feels focused, it feels aligned, it feels like you're doing something that is good for you. And, and actually, you know, there might be things that come up like new projects or new ideas or something. These new things are likely to be what I'm, what I'm hearing. I'm hearing like a spinoff, right? So maybe, I don't know, six months, a year ago, you started down a particular path, but maybe you never felt really committed to it or you never invested fully into it, whatever the case was. I feel as though this month there might be some kind of like little branch that starts to grow off of that original trajectory and that might capture your interest more fully and actually might prove to be surprisingly lucrative. I don't know that this is going to be the month where Virgo has to like lock themselves into a specific, like, nope, I committed to this last year. So this is what it has to be. Remember that you are mercury ruled. So flexibility is so important for you. All right. We need you to be changing paths and doing new things. Even if you didn't finish the old things, that is a okay. And, uh, I think this might be a month where you're like, even though I never really did this, this feels better. And maybe the whole point of that original path was to get you to this point where this little spin-off little branch can, can finally kind of sprout, if you will. Okay. So let's, oops, almost dropped the cards. Let's start off with a major arcana card, which signifies what does the universe need from Virgo this month for April, 2023 for Virgo, the sun, it, it just needs your light. It needs your authenticity. It needs you, your, your truthfulness, your transparency. It just needs you to be like totally in tune with what's going on inside of you. So it's not a time to be making excuses for yourself. You know, like if you feel like you have to justify certain decisions to people in your life, you're just leaking your energy. I, I mean, I'm not saying to like all up and quit your job and not tell your spouse or anything, but you know, when it comes to what you feel is right, you don't have to explain it away. It might not make sense to a lot of people, actually, you know, it might be something that everyone kind of says, ah, it doesn't seem logical. You've already put so much in the other thing. But again, I think the reason why you originally started down that first path was because you needed to get to a point where this spinoff was possible. Okay. Or I don't know why I'm saying spinoff. It kind of feels like a little spinoff. Kind of in like, what is it? Cheers. That old, that old show cheers. How like Frasier was a spinoff from cheers. 
but like it became a really successful show on its own. I know I'm aging myself. Frasier was one of my favorite shows in the 90s. Um, but like, it's kind of how I'm feeling. Okay. When it's time for one path to end, another path may begin. And for you, it feels incredibly profitable. All right. What else for Virgo? Who is in the environment? You need to be aware of this month. Who is in the environment for Virgo? Queen of Wands. Okay. Queen of Wands feels powerful and yet uninvested in this whole thing. It's like she understands what you're doing. She understands why you're doing it, but she also doesn't really care all that much. She's here to, you know, kind of offer reinforcement and advice and counsel when you need it. And I think it is someone that you really respect a lot, but she's not profiting off of your success. She's, she's not a part of this. She, she's just here as a voice and a reflector. That's it. The thing I like about the queen of wands is how impulsive and passionate she is. And she does tend to have an unapologetic approach to things. And that might be something that Virgo might need to work on, you know, is just doing something without explaining all the reasons why this needs to be done. You just do it because it feels right for you. She's like the queen of that. <laughs> She's like, this is what I want. So I'm, I did it. That's it. You know, I don't need to explain it. And she, I don't even know if she, she could explain it if she wanted to. And maybe that's how it is with you. You might not even be able to explain it even if you wanted to. But the Queen of Wands is positive. She feels, you know, like a cheerleader. Yeah, Virgo, you got it. You're great. It'll be great. And then she goes about her life. <laughs> Two of Wands. Okay, hold on. Ten of Wands. You know, Ten of Wands has been coming out quite a bit lately. Let's see what else. The Emperor. It feels as though some aspect of your life has just gotten too burdensome. Uh, and I'm not saying that we have to quit when things get hard, but we do probably need to quit or change course or make adjustments. Maybe it's not full on quit, but we need to make adjustments when we just, we literally are getting nothing out of it. And I look at this 10 of wands and I feel like you're getting nothing out of all this weight that you are carrying and it is blocking your light. It's interesting. We got the sun card here, but this is in the dead of night, right? we got the night sky back here. So it's like you're hiding in the dark or something. <laughs> this might be a time when Virgo decides to just go bigger with something. You go bigger with a project, bigger with, you know, asking for a promotion, or you go bigger in terms of what it is you're asking your romantic partner for. Two of Wands suggests that you have a vision of what you want, and this is a moment where you get to pull the trigger on certain things to get that ball rolling. I, I don't think Virgo is in a position where they are happy with just sitting around and waiting for something to happen. This is what we would call the action component of manifestation. Now we've been in a highly action oriented, you know, you know, place, I guess, astrologically a lot for late, like a long time, really since like Sagittarius season, the last fire sign, this is when action started to become super, super important. And I, I mean, we're still there. We are in an air, um, so, uh, we're in a fire sign season, right? Aries. And then we move on into Taurus. These are not idle Zodiac signs. Okay. They, they push and they have a lot to do with our physical bodies and our skills and our talents and how we apply those things, how we leverage those things. And so, yes, I know you have the vision, but the vision right now is not enough. It has to be backed up with some kind of 
behavior, <laughs> you know, or, or an action that pushes that ball forward. This 10 of wands is probably what's preventing you from doing that because you, you could come up with a million excuses as to why you shouldn't be doing this other thing. A million excuses, but that emperor, now I feel this is you, that emperor, it says, Virgo, you know, you're just fooling yourself. If you are coming up with a million excuses to not run with this little spinny offy thing that feels really positive for you, if you're coming up with all of these excuses, now I'm not, please, please don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to go get distracted. I just want to be very clear about that. I'm not telling you to run after shiny objects. I'm not telling you to like stay unfocused with things. It's just, I, I feel that that original path has reached some kind of, I don't even want to say a lull. It just, it feels like it stopped producing. It stopped producing the income that you're wanting, or it stopped producing the attention that you need. It stopped, pro- what, like, whatever. Like if it was a marketing campaign, this is when we would quit paying for ads. Okay. It's, it's stopped being effective. So now we have to go into something new. We have to experiment with new things, but it doesn't mean we cannot build off the knowledge and, you know, I guess the statistics that we acquired through that initial campaign, all of that knowledge can be applied with this spinoff doesn't mean we're quitting or stopping short. The emperor knows that. And the emperor, that's why the emperor is saying like you actually, the, the force of the emperor is trying to get you off of that original path, go a different direction, start something else. (laughs) It's telling you, okay, go left, go right. Stop going straight. All right. Where's my deck? Where's my card? Okay. Three more cards for Virgo for April, 2023. Knight of Wands, Two of Cups, a King of Cups. So here I have two people, King of Cups, Knight of Wands, back to back, not looking at each other. These two are vastly different individuals. And then we have the two of cups, which is kind of like a a meeting of the hearts. Okay. So what this tells me is that Virgo, you have some strange relationship with someone. I don't, I don't really know if it's romantic. It might not be, but your personalities are so different. And I actually, I'm not going to say you guys want different things because that might not necessarily be true, but maybe the timing Like, let's say it is a romantic relationship. You might be kind of dating, but you both say you ultimately want to get married, but one person thinks that means within like a year and another person thinks it means within 10 years. You see what I'm saying? You might ultimately want the same thing, but the timeline is completely different. The expectations feel different. And the vibe is just like really not meshing very well. This seems kind of separate from everything I've talked about so far. This kind of new spinoff pathway feels like it's more for you. It feels like it's something that, you know, you have to kind of do to satisfy your own soul. Whereas this is incorporating someone else. The queen of wands feels like a separate entity who is maybe advising or looking in as a neutral third party, sort of helping you, counseling you, giving you advice, whatever the case may be. But there is an individual in your life, you know, that you're operating at a completely different pace, completely different rate. He's got a night sky. He's got a daytime sky. You know, like your, your, your perspectives of the world are, are so different, but you're going to need to find some kind of common ground here. If this is a romantic union, this may be the two of you kind of 
figuring out your differences and figuring out how to work with those differences and coming into some kind of compromise or middle ground. The problem I see with a compromise is that it means that it's kind of a lose, lose. You have to give up something. They have to give up something. And actually neither person is really all that happy. Um, I'm not seeing a split. Okay. Two of cups is definitely not a split. It's coming together actually. So there is probably going to be a moment of heart to heart where you really talk about things and you set expectations for one another. This new spinoff might be kind of an extra added variable that needs to be taken into account. For some reason, I feel like this Knight of Wands is you, Virgo, because this is you wanting to like go take off on a whole new thing, a whole new adventure, what, you know, and you may not even know what that is at the beginning of April. This might make a little bit more sense in Taurus season as we approach the end of April. Uh, we ha- Don't forget we have a big eclipse this month. So on the 20th, we have an eclipse. We have the sun coming into Taurus that, that, that eclipse is at 29 degrees of Aries. So I do think that eclipse is going to be a big turning point for a lot of people. And I feel that might be the case for you, Virgo, where we just simply kind of have this urge, this powerful, like more powerful than us type of urge to suddenly pick up and go. And, you know, and you have to contend with what someone else is expecting. And this might feel burdensome 10 of wands. It may feel like you can't really be yourself because you have this obligation. It's not that you don't care about this king. I think you care about this king so much, which is why so much consideration is going into this. You care and maybe even you love this person too, which kind of adds even a thicker layer. But you can't not do what you know you need to do. And that's where some Virgos might feel really torn within themselves. And this may be a place where you have to really talk and you have to say, this is what I want and this is what you want and they don't match. So how do we rectify this? How do we make this work? Okay. The five of cups, not surprised by that. Eight of wands. and an ace of swords. At least there's a lot of room for truth with that ace of swords. I don't know that Virgo is going to be dealing in the murkiness that could sometimes be the human psyche. It feels like everything is very forthright. It's all out in the open. There's not a lot of behind the scenes or hidden in the shadows type of anything. It's all just very out there which Virgo will appreciate. It's direct. It's not passive aggressive. You know, it's, it's there and, and you will be able to find solutions. I see with the ACE of swords, are you finding solutions because all the information is out there? And I look at that five of cups and it, it does seem like something that might have been stable is shifting doesn't necessarily mean lost, but it is shifting and it feels different. You know, connections always evolve. They do transform (laughs) all the time. And I, I wonder if that's something that Virgo just might not really be entirely emotionally and mentally prepared for. And yet when that moment comes, you do wholly embrace it because you know that it is essential for your path. 
Eight of Wands tells me that Virgo is going to go through some really big changes very quickly this month. It will be an acceleration of progress, an acceleration, an initiation. It is Aries season, so yes, a lot of initiation is necessary, but I also feel you will leverage Taurus season quite beautifully as well. So we have got two seasons ahead of us, Virgo, that are going to be highly, highly productive. Please don't forget Aries lies in your eighth house. So relationship transformation is a big component of what might happen here. So as the sun comes into well, the sun is actually already in Aries. It comes into a connection with Chiron and then on in through Jupiter. Uh, so it's going to amplify the eighth house themes, which are death, rebirth, transformation. And because there's a lot of other people involved in that eighth house, it makes sense that another person is showing up powerfully in this reading for you. How do you work with another person's resources and so on and so forth? But you do find an answer, but it does mean that you're going to have to release or shed some kind of identity or some sort of belief that you had that like something was always going to stay this way. This is the month that it changes. This is the month that things shift and evolve, but it is making room for your prosperity. So you can't be that sad about it. It's kind of bittersweet. I get it, but it's also exactly what you want too. Okay. We're going to pull out clarifiers. The cards I'm about to pull out are the cards we will cover in the comprehensive reading. We usually talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about all of these cards. The link for all of that will be found in the description box and the comment thread down below. So let's see what comes through for the sun card. What do we need to know here? We start off with the two of coins, the queen of cups. And the Empress, beautiful. I like that the Emperor and the Empress is coming out because it really just shows Virgo standing so firmly in their power. In the environment, we have the Magician, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Page of Coins, beautiful. All right, so clarifying the Two of Wands. What else does Virgo need to know? Clarifying this Two of Wands here. Another sun, excellent. Judgment. Feels very decisive this month. Doesn't have, I don't think you're going to have a lot of questions. You're not going to do the wishy washy back and forth thing. It's all very just like, okay, this is what it needs to be, period. We've got the Eight of Swords, the Three of Swords and the eight of cups. Sorry, that 10 of wands is actually pretty powerful. So we clarify the emperor here. Page of cups. Oh, beautiful. Three of coins, 10 of cups, knight of wands, knight of coins. Okay. So I was right in that. That is your card. The knight of wands. Oh, we, we're getting two Virgo cards on top of that Knight of Wands. How crazy is that? And then we have the world. Knight of Coins, the Hermit, and the world. For the Two of Cups, what else do you need to know? Ten of Swords. Well, at least you're putting... Ten of Swords and Death. At least you're putting an issue to bed. And then five, another Five of Cups. Two of Cups seems like a hard conversation. Um, with the King of Cups, we have an Ace of Wands. We have a Nine of Cups. OK. 
King of Wands. For the Five of Cups, we have the Moon. Strength. And Queen of Swords. I like the sword energy because it is decisive. Four of Cups. Four of Coins. Beautiful. The Star. The Devil. A Knight of Swords. And the seven of coins. Okay, this is where we are going to pick up in the comprehensive. So if you want to join me, you are absolutely more than welcome. Thank you all so much for being here. You know how much I love and adore you. Have an amazing month and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.